but because of your grace and your mercy, you have allowed us another chance. So God, we come to you with our hearts filled. We come to give you true worship. God, understanding, God, that you are a God that heals. You are a God that saves, God. You are a God that mends the broken home. You are God that mends the broken heart. So in the name of Jesus, God, we ask that thou would have thy own way in this place. We ask, God, that souls will be saved in the name of Jesus. We ask that questions will be answered in the name of Jesus. We ask that the captives will be set free. God, have your way in this place. Lord, we need you, God, and we can't make it without you. So, God, set us on hallelujah. Fire, God. Let, let our hearts burn within. Then, God, the man that's going to bring the message, we ask that thou would bless him. God, you remove him out of self and you step in. God, you preach to us in the name of Jesus, God. And God, we will have the hearts that we will accept whatever word that you have for us. God, we thank you because, God, you've just been so, so good to us, God. God, you looked beyond our faults and you saw to every one of our needs. God, you gave us another chance, God, that that wreck could have killed us, God, that tornado could have took us out of here, but you gave us another chance, God. And for that, we have to say thank you. But not only did you save us, but you, you save our family, God. You, you save our friends, God. You, you save our kids, God. And we just got to say thank you. So, God, we come to praise your name, God. Have thine way, God. Have thine way, God. God, as we praise God, we ask that everything that's on the inside of us, all the greatness that's on the inside of us, that it would be released in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, we praise you, and we love you. Amen, and thank you, Lord. Amen. Good morning, family. Come on, clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing our congregational hymn this morning, Saved. Hallelujah. We're going to lift our voices all across the sanctuary, and we're going to declare it together. Come on, everybody, sing, I found a friend. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it reads as such. All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. All give thanks unto the Lord, to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. All give thanks to the Lord of lords, 
for his mercy endures forever. To him alone who does great things. Amen. Hallelujah. If you know we serve a great God, come on, somebody open up your mouth and give God glory. Come on, I need you to stand to your feet right here and let's magnify the Lord together. Hallelujah. Why don't you look at somebody and just tell them we serve a great God. Hallelujah. Look at somebody else and tell them we serve a great God. Hallelujah. He deserves the praise. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Come on, everybody clap your hands right here. Let's go. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Great 
call you Lord somebody lift up your hands in the sanctuary and can you just declare in this room God you are great you are a great God and we honor you Father we give your name the glory great are you Lord there's nobody greater can we say it together right here let's say search the Lord Come on, church, let's sing it. Goodbye, Lord. I looked high and low. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell them nobody's greater than 
Come on, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Come on, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Come on, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised as you take your seats in the presence of the Lord. There's nobody greater than God. Come on, if we could just be real about this thing. This, on this week, Lord, we could have lost our mind. We could have given up. We could have thrown in a towel. But because of our great God, come on, here we are. Come on. Come on. You should have lost it a long time ago. Come on, let, let's just be real. Come on, let's, let's just be real. The, the economy has been all jacked up. Money has been funny. Change has been changed. Every other week we're not feeling well, but because of our great God. Come on, come on. Let's just be real. When the scripture said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, I don't know it's by y'all, but because of God's grace and mercy, I ain't all who I'm supposed to be. But because of God's grace and mercy, I'm a work in progress. But because of God's grace and mercy, come on, I should have lost my mind a long time ago, but, but because of God's grace and mercy, I should have been dead a long time ago, but, but because of God's grace and mercy, I am. And since I'm here, how great is that God? God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy. God, you are worthy to praise. I'm going to just be real, y'all. I don't need no rice crying out for me because I know what the Lord has done for me. I just, I just got to be real. You don't know my story. And all the pain that I've been through. But because of God's grace and mercy. And God said that sometimes the pain that you're going through, it's necessary. It's necessary in order for him to get his glory. So y'all hold on. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because I'm here to tell you better days are coming. I'm here to tell you in your finances, better days are coming. In your health, better days are coming. With your family, better days are coming. Inside of your home, better days are coming. In your relationships, better days are coming. On your job, better days are coming. In your business, better days are coming. At the car dealership, better days are coming. At the hospital, better days are coming. 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 Come on, praise him. Come on, you should all be up on your feet. Give God praise on this morning. Hasn't he done something for you? Come on, if he's done anything, you ought to praise him on this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now come on, together. On the count of three, we gonna make them hear us at the French Quarter Fest. They ain't gonna be able to do sound check over there cause we about to give God a praise as a unified church. Come on, on the count of three. I want you to scream, I want you to praise from the top, from the innermost part of your being. Y'all ready? I don't think y'all ready. I don't think y'all ready, y'all ready? On the count of three, come on. We about to make the devil mad up in here. We about to release some things with this praise. We about to break some chains with this praise. On the count of three. One, two, three. Oh, man. Oh.
now you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Y'all, we can be, rejoice and be glad in it. Didn't that feel good just to get that praise out? Didn't it feel real good just to get that praise out? Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I want you to know that the Lord is pleased with you. Good morning and welcome to MCI's worship experience. For you could have elected any place to worship on this morning. But you and God, y'all got with each other. And, and God saw fit that you make it to the house of the Lord on this morning. So whether you're viewing virtually or whether you are in person, I am glad to see you on this morning. For you made it to the house of the Lord. And we know the house of the Lord is wherever the Lord is the Lord of the house. So if, if God is God over your house, come on, let's tell the Lord, thank you for your neighbor making it to the house of the Lord. You don't know what somebody else's struggle was to get here on this morning. So that's why you ought to be able to thank God for your neighbor pressing their way to the house of the Lord on this morning as we are excited to see all of the beautiful faces on this morning, let's keep in mind those who could not be here by reason of a good conscience, those who are in faith for their healing. For we know we serve Jehovah Rapha, he is a healer. We also want to keep in mind those who are learning to deal with the new norm, who loved ones has transitioned to be with God. For we know that when you need God to comfort you, God will be the comforter that you need him to be. If you know without a doubt that we serve Jehovah Rapha, healer, and a God that will comfort you. Come on, look toward heaven and tell him thank you. Because you might not need him now, but eventually. <laughs> you might not need him to hear you now, but eventually you will need him. So thank him in advance for your healing in advance. For not only is God a healer, not only is it a comforter, but God is a God that sustains us, y'all. He, he keeps us day in and day out. He keeps us week to week. He keeps us month to month. He's even kept us year to year. And with that being said, we want to take this opportunity to recognize anyone that's celebrating a birthday today or you celebrated a birthday on this week. We ask that you would stand so that you could be recognized. Any birthdays in the happy, happy, we got some birthdays in the building, y'all. Happy, 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 happy birthday from Apostle and Elect Lady and the entire MCI family. We want you to know that when you were born, don't sit down yet, don't sit down yet. We got to tell you something. When you were born, purpose was released in the earth. Come on, y'all know what we do. Look to all of them and tell them, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday from your church family. You may be seated. With that same love, with that same excitement, we want to take this opportunity to recognize any couples that celebrated a wedding anniversary or you celebrated one this week, you're celebrating one today, or you celebrated all oh, y'all. There's love in the room. There's love in the room. Happy, happy, happy anniversary from elect lady and apostle Terry Gullage and the entire MCI family. Come on, y'all, one more time. Look to Walter and tell him, happy anniversary. Ain't nothing like love, y'all. Ain't nothing like love, y'all. It's time to worship God and giving. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Let's try this again. It's time for us to worship God in giving. That's what I, because God loves a cheerful giver. Here at Mount Calvary, as the deacons are already in place, we give the tithe, which is 10% of your income, of that which the Lord has blessed you with. For we understand that the tithe, or the tenth, is not the ceiling where our giving ends, but it's the floor where our giving begins. And the Bible says that God gives seed to the soil. Then we give an offering which is reflective of just how good God has been. Can anybody declare with me that God has been good to them? Y'all know what that offering is? That's called a liberal offering. And the Bible says that the liberal soul shall be made fat. Then at the end of service, y'all, we're going to be able to all participate in intentionally honoring our pastor. For the Bible says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. But before we give, let us pray as we dare not take for granted on what we should give. Oh, grace and everlasting Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, because you've just been so awesome, God. You're so good. You're so kind. God, you're so great. So in the name of Jesus, as we come to give unto you, we ask that you would release our faith, allowing us to give from our heart, understanding, God, that you have the power to open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. 
It is in Jesus' name. We thank you. We love you and we praise you. Amen and thank you, Lord. Hopefully you have had ample opportunity to complete your giving options at this time. We ask you to lift them unto the Lord and repeat after me our offering confession. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to sow good seed into good soil. I know I will not suffer because of my obedience, for I am blessed according to your word. I set my affections on your house and your work, for I am confident that you've already made all grace abound towards me, that I have all sufficiency in all things, and I abound to every good work. I believe your word. Uh-uh. I believe your word. Come on, you better believe it. I believe your word is already done in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give it a victory way. Give it a good victory way. Some see and be blessed. your blessing is pressed down shaking together and rolling over I don't know about y'all but that's a prophecy over your life and I don't know how y'all just sit there so quiet as God is prophesying into my life that he gonna press things down so much he gonna shake it together so much he gonna press it down and add some more and add some more and add some more press it down and add some more he gonna shake it up and then it's gonna be so much that it's just running over I don't know about y'all but I'm gonna praise him Cause my blessing is praise down, shaking together, and running over. Hallelujah. We have a few pastoral observations as pastor and the leg lady are away. For Wednesday, y'all, we got 12 noon and 7 noon Bible study. We start prayer service at 1130. 
and 6.30 p.m. Y'all come on out on Wednesday to Bible study. We also have prayer agreement calls every Wednesday, 6 a.m., 3 a.m., and 9 p.m. Member information update. If you have changed your phone number, address, or your email, please add an updated photo and forward that information to 504-919-8051 or send to admin mciworshipcenter.org. We are attempting to approve communication with partners and our giving, giving numbers. Y'all, Intentional Honor Emphasis Day will be April 28th, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. That's right. Intentional Honor Emphasis Day where we get the opportunity to honor our apostle for we are, have been asked to wear either yellow and khaki as a sign of unity on that day. Y'all got plenty of time to go get your khakis. You can go to the uniform store. They got khakis there. Also, immediately following service, there will be pictures taken and 60-second videos that will be sent to our apostle in the foyer immediately following service. Y'all, they got it so pretty out there, so get out there and take your star shots. Take your star shots and do the videos and, and so that we can send them to our apostle on that special day. On 2024, y'all, we going on a, on a crusade. Kingdom culture, cru not a cruise. Y'all y'all getting excited, y'all. <laughs> y'all trying to go eat sex, big chicken and all that. Kingdom culture crusade will be November 6th through the 19th at 2024. Then y'all, you know what I love about this church, y'all, we always give. We like to give, we like to give. So we will have a food giveaway April 19, 2024. Y'all, those are our pastoral observations. Let's continue to pray for Apostle and Elect Lady as they are away. But just because they're away, it doesn't mean that there isn't a word in the house. God has an in-season word that's in the house today. And immediately following this worship song, you will hear from our very own Minister Kyron Gullage. Hallelujah. The Bible declares, who am I that you are so mindful of me? Hallelujah. He created me just a little lower than the angels. God is so mindful of you that he knows the very hairs you have on your head. I dare you look at somebody and encourage them and tell them, Jesus, he knows your name. He knows who you are this morning. He knows what you're going through. Hallelujah. You know my name You know my name Thank you, Jesus You know my name Oh, Lord, oh. You know my name Here's the part I like Oh, how you walk with me. Oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you tell me. I am.
I don't declare it this morning. Lift your hands and tell them, say, you know. to give him praise for knowing your name come on if you're glad that he knows you you ought to give him glory and tell him thank you for knowing who i am oh god oh how you walk with me oh, and oh how you tell me come on lay hands on yourself and say i am your own All right, all right, don't stop praising him, hallelujah, because he knows your name, hallelujah. Oh, how he walks with you. Oh, how he talks with you. Oh, how he tells you that I am your own. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't stop praising him, because God is good to you all the time. God is good, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, dear Heavenly Father, with this opportunity to speak your word. You take me and hide me behind the cross 
so that they see all of you and none of me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, these we ask in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 First, giving honor to God and the apostle and Lady Gullis in their absence, I just want to uh, thank God for this opportunity to speak his word into your hearing on this, on this morning. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to get right into it. Please stand. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah 41. And we're going to begin at the 8th verse. Isaiah 41. And begin at the 8th verse. When you have it, please say amen. If you don't have it yet, say I'm, I'm, I'm turning, I'm turning. I still hear pages turning. All right, all right. Isaiah, Isaiah 41. Beginning at the 8th verse. And it reads, But as for you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, my chosen one, descended from Abraham, my friend. I have called you back from the ends of the earth, saying, You are my servant, for I have chosen you and will not throw you away. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. You may be seated. You may be seated. On this morning, on this morning, I'm going to speak from the thought of, the thought of, you are not alone. You are not alone. When Apostle gave me uh, this assignment a couple of weeks ago, I was battling what, uh, what I would speak about. I was asking God, asking the Holy Spirit what I would speak about, and he gave me two things to talk about. Um, but he, he dropped this in my spirit. He said, talk about you are not alone. And immediately, immediately, the Michael Jackson song came into my, my hearing, you know, uh, uh, you know, that you are not alone. I am here with you. Though we're far away, I am here to stay. But you are not alone. I am here with you. Though we're far apart, you're always in my heart. You are not alone. I don't know who Michael Jackson was talking to. But, but God put in my spirit that, that he is with me. And I'm never alone in what I'm going through. Hallelujah. Have you ever felt that your prayers weren't getting answered? Maybe you're going through a crisis, and despite your prayers, you find no change. There are times when we feel all alone in certain situations. Times where we're praying, and it seems like God isn't even answering us. It seems like we keep praying and praying, and God seems like he's not listening. And, and, and so, so, you know, when your prayers aren't coming as quickly, answers aren't coming as quickly as we thought they should, or even at all, as a matter of fact, we talk to God, and it seems like he's turning a deaf ear to our situations. Here in Isaiah 41, we, we see that Isaiah is trying to tell the children of Israel that you are not alone. The concept here is that God is speaking through Isaiah and he is promising them, he's promising them to bring uh, his people back from captivity. The interesting thing here is that Isaiah is writing about what will happen about 180 years from the time of his writing. So he was, he was prophesying that uh, what would happen about 180 years later. And even before God's people had sinned and were judged, and were sent to Babylon for 70 years, God is telling them that they will return again, and he will bless them. 
I'm going to give you a little history about the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah is referred to as the Bible in miniature. Because Isaiah has 66 chapters, just like the Bible has 66 books. The first 39 chapters correspond with the Old Testament as they speak of judgment. The final 27 chapters echo the New Testament where it has emphasis on grace, comfort, and restoration. These chapters were written to an afflicted people who were filled with fear. Motivated by an enduring love for his people, God encourages Israel to trust him for the future. Despite their past rebellion, Israel was not abandoned by the Lord. Throughout every twist, throughout every turn of Israel's long history, from slavery in Egypt, wandering in the desert, conquering in Canaan, to captivity in Babylon, God wanted his people to understand he had always been with them and he's still with them he's still with you he is your God who will strengthen and who will help you God's promise uh, I will strengthen you is packed with a lot of meaning the original Hebrew text the verb translated to strengthen means to make making someone stronger and stronger it means to grow and develop to prevail or to have or show courage, to grasp or keep hold of. God was aware of his people's weaknesses. He used everything in their personal experience and journey of faith to develop strength and courage in them. The Lord was with them and had taken hold of them and would never, ever let them go. When God says, I am with you, when he says, I am with you, uh, he seeks to calm our fears with the reassurance of his powerful presence, even in the worst times. Despite all Israel had suffered during its years in captivity, despite every threat from powerful enemies, despite his weaknesses and consequences of defeat, God wanted his, his people to know that he was still with them. Just as he's with us through every unforeseen twist of faith in our personal trials in life, he is with us. The Israelites are desperate to hear a word from God. I imagine if you're like me, you kind of perked up. You kind of perked up when you heard about Israel's situation and you're hoping God has a word for you. Because some of us, some of us are tired. Some of us are worried. Some of us are, are desperate and we need a word from God. You see that, you see it, the Israelites, uh, they find themselves in this dark pit. God speaks a word of promise over them, and now you fast forward some years later. You fast forward, and this word is a promise for you and me today. Hallelujah. A question was asked that if God doesn't do anything else for you in this lifetime, that's okay because he's done enough. But sometimes when you pray, it feels like nothing else is being heard or nothing else is being responded to. So I'm going to talk about me for a second. Here it is. I'm going through, y'all. I'm going through some things right now. And, and I mean, uh, a person that I confide in, they tell me all the right things. If it's God's will, it's going to happen. Uh, just have faith. It's going to happen it's in God's timing. Yeah, I know that's, that's, that's good. That's fine. But, but, but I've been praying and seeking God, but he hasn't given me anything yet. I get so frustrated, y'all, uh, but, but, but God took me to Psalms, took me to the Psalms, the book of Psalms, the 77th division of Psalms, Asaph, Asaph is speaking here. I know y'all thought David wrote all the Psalms, but Asaph is speaking here, and he's dealing with the fact that God is not answering him. I, I'm going to read a, a few uh, scriptures from Psalms uh, 77, and he says, he says, I cry out to God, yes, I shout. Oh, that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long, I prayed with hands lifted towards heaven, but my soul wasn't comforted. I think of God and I moan, overwhelmed with longing for his help. Uh, you don't let me sleep. I, I am too distressed to even pray. I think of the good old days long since ended. When my nights were filled with joyful songs, I searched my soul and pondered the difference now. Has the Lord rejected me forever? 
Will he never again be kind to me? His unfailing love has gone forever. His promises permanently failed. Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed the door on his compassion? And then I said, this is my fate. The most high has turned his hand against me. Oh, but it gets good right here. But then I recall all you have done, oh Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. Oh God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. What I love about this passage is that Asaph, even though he eventually came to himself and reminded himself of the goodness of God, he was honest with himself first. Frustrated and all, frustrated and all, for 10 verses, he was honest about the deep frustration that he had, and he thought God wasn't hearing him at all. Hallelujah. He was not going to get to all the great things that God had done until he was first honest about the emotion that he was feeling right now. Hallelujah. And that's what I, I'm here to tell you today. No matter what it looks like, no matter if God is being silent, no matter if God is not answering you, you are not alone. Hallelujah. Every day ain't good. Every day ain't good. Life ain't good every day. But, but God is good. God is good. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. But my life ain't. My life not good. Sometimes life be life for y'all. I ain't gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna be honest with you. My job ain't good all the time. My health ain't good all the time. My car note, my bills, my finances, they're not good all the time. And, but, but immediately, Isaiah is telling us that we don't have to be afraid and we don't have to be discouraged. You know, it's no accident that we see these words all throughout Scripture. In fact, if you look at don't be afraid or do not worry or do not be discouraged and you added them all up, you know how many times the word of God tells us this? 365 times. That's one time for every day in a year. So it's no accident that God placed this command, one command per day for us to think about. He cares so much for us that he, he has a verse for every single day so that we don't have to be discouraged and we don't have to be afraid. I love that, that God does this because he knows we're going to be discouraged at times and he knows we're going to be afraid and we're going to feel alone at times. It's in all of us. We all, at some time or another, have negative thoughts and in those thoughts we find thoughts of worry, thoughts of fear, Thoughts that burden us down. But you know what is amazing about God? You know what's amazing about God? He doesn't say, just get over it. He doesn't say, just change your mind. He enters it with us. Hallelujah. It's the reason he tells us, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be discouraged. In fact, I have a plan for what you're going through. And it's, it, it, in that plan, it's a promise. Hallelujah. A promise for, that was for the Israelites who was in captive and a promise for you and for me today. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you. I've got plans uh, that are designed to give you a future and a hope. If I had to sum up Isaiah 41 and 10 in one sentence that you can take away from this message, it's simple. That God promises his presence in our pain. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. God promises his presence in our pain. No matter if it's physical pain, no matter if it's mental pain, emotional pain, whatever is leading you to worry and fear and discouragement, God promises his presence in our pain. And this verse tells us uh, a few things, a few ways in which we can hold on to the promise that we don't have to be discouraged and we don't have to be afraid. The first part of this promise is the next part of Isaiah 41 and 10, where he said, I am with you for I am your God. Because God said it in this passage, 
He means it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, he actually means it. He won't leave you, nor he won't forsake you. I could tell you I'm going somewhere with you. I could tell you uh, I, I'm, when I get off from the store, when I get off from, the, uh, from uh, my work, I'm going, to, going with you to the store. I'm going with you to the mall. I can say it. But if I'm tired, I might say, never mind, I'm not going. But God won't do that. If he means it, he's, he's, he's going to do it. Hallelujah. For some, of, for some of us, hallelujah, that's great. But for others, y'all might say it's okay, but I need his presence more than that. I need his help, and I need his healing. Hallelujah. There were a lot of times I talked to him, and I'm like, look, I need you to show up really big. I need you to show up really, in a really big way. I need you to change my circumstances. I need you to heal me. And, and sometimes he does, and I'm grateful for that. But sometimes he doesn't. And when he doesn't, his promises that he will strengthen me. Hallelujah. So whatever you're going through, you are not alone. You are not alone. Let me, let me give you this. Let me give you this. Uh, there's always a test before promotion. Every time you're about to level up, your character and your faith will be tested. Hallelujah. In those moments, you might start believing that God has abandoned you. But guess what? He hasn't. Uh, the teacher is always silent during the test, but always present in the room. I think I got to say it again. The teacher is always silent during the test, but present in the room. So stay focused. Stay faithful. What's on the other side will be worth it. It might feel like life is breaking you down, but God is building you up for what's ahead of you. Hallelujah. A new assignment, hallelujah, requires a new you, a stronger you. So even if God is silent, God is still moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, uh, what helps us to know that we are not alone in what we're going through? The first thing that helps us to know that we are reminded that we are chosen by God. We are reminded that we are chosen by God. In Isaiah 41, 9, it says, I have called you back from the ends of the earth, saying, you are my servant, for I have chosen you. God has chosen you for such a time as this. He won't leave you stuck out. Remember, Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So before God made you a living creation, he had a plan for your life. He knew who you were. He knew what you were going to do before you did it. He knew how you were going to play in the game when he put you in. It's like being picked uh, to play sports on the playground. You are always the first one picked. Why? Why are you always the first one picked? Because you are God's all-star. God picked you. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So I don't care if God is silent in the season of your life. Eventually, he will answer you because you are, have been chosen by him. Hallelujah. Not only have you been chosen by him, uh, we're reminded, number two, that God will strengthen you. God will strengthen you. Isaiah 41 and, and the eight clause of 10, it says, do not be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen and help you. God's promises to empower you to stand firm in the face of adversity and with his strength to overcome every obstacle that stands in our way. He provides the resources we need to persevere through the difficult times. In your moments of weaknesses and doubt, when fear threatens to overwhelm you and doubt clouds your vision, remember, remember that he is your strength and he is your shield. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. So he is the God that gives power to the weak and strength to the weary and who breathes life 
into dry bones and calls forth light from darkness. So he will strengthen you thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. God will put you on display. God will put you on display. In the B clause of 10, it says, I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. When it's all said and done, God will hold you up for everyone to see. When he gives you an answer, he will put you on display throughout scripture. Throughout the scripture, the right hand is used as a picture of strength, capability, and power. So God will hold you up with his victorious right hand. I came to let you know that God is always with you. When you feel like God is doing nothing, he's working out the details of our days. He's working out the detail of our lives. He's actually ordering our footsteps. God, all throughout scripture, shows up everywhere, even in the most unlikely places, even in the places where he seems distant or most disengaged, we can trust that what we we can trust his hand, but uh, we can trust him. And we can't uh, trust his hand, but we can't. We can trust his heart that he his, he's there fully present, fully invested in the details of our lives. That's what we get from the scripture through every book of the Bible. Every book of the Bible. God is there orchestrating, and he's working from the beginning to the end. Hallelujah. In Genesis, he's the, he's the breath of life. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he shows up as our high priest. In Numbers, he is the fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he is Israel's guide. In Joshua, he's the salvation's choice. In Judges, he's Israel's guard. In Ruth, he's the kinsman redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he's our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, we see him as sovereign. In Ezra, he, he is the true and faithful scribe. In Nehemiah, he is the one who rebuilds walls and he rebuilds our lives. In Esther, he is, he is our courage. In Job, he is a timeless redeemer. In Psalms, he is our morning song. In Proverbs, he is our wisdom. In Ecclesiastes, he is our time and our season. In Song of Solomon, he is the lover's dream. In Isaiah, he is the prince of peace. In Jeremiah, he is the weeping prophet. In Lamentations, he is our cry for Israel. In Ezekiel, he's a calm from sin. In Daniel, he's a stranger that will show up in your fire. In Hosea, he is a forever faithful. In Joel, he is the spirit's power. In Amos, he is the strong arm that carry. In Obadiah, he is the Lord our Savior. In Jonah, he is the great missionary. In Micah, he is the promise of peace. In Nahum, he's, he's our strength and our shield. In Habakkuk and Zephaniah, he is the one that builds of revival. He, in Haggai, he restores anything that has been lost. In Zechariah, he is our fountain. And in Malachi, at the end of the Old Testament, we see him as the son of righteous, rising with healing in his wings. That's just who he is in the Old Testament. If he's there in those days, he's, I'm sure he'll be there for us now. Mm, mm, mm. As I close, as I close, you may go through seasons where it seems that God is silent in your life. But don't be discouraged. You are not alone. It's, it's, it's in those hard times. Remember, remember your relationship with God is most important. Keep trusting him. Keep praying to him. Keep watching for him. Keep waiting. He may be silent, but it may be for a reason. He told me to tell you to never forget that he is always with you through those good days and those bad days on the mountaintops, in the valley low, in joy, in tears. Whatever you're going through, he's right there with you every day, every night, every step of the way. He loves you and he will never leave you because you are not alone. Hallelujah. If that word was for you on this morning, won't you give God a hand clap of praise? God, thank you. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God, for this word. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Through all I have gone through, Lord, it was you. Yes, God. Through all I have gone through, Lord, it was you. It was you. God, you pulled me through. Pulling me through. Yeah. Hey, it was you. Lord, it was you. Pulling me through. Yes, he'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. Somebody came in here today wondering, how am I going to do this all by myself? You came unsure and uncertain of how you're going to make it. You came feeling as though that nobody loves you, nobody cares. But the word of God told us today that you are not alone. And God said it's real simple. In the moments that you feel as though you're all by yourself, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your, your heart. And he said, he will be right there with you. He said, He'll, I'm the God that I'll never leave you nor forsake you for. If you accept me into your heart, there will never be another time in your life where you will be alone. So if that's you, we ask that you would raise your hand. If you said, I, 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 God, I need, I need you in my life. For... You say, I used to come to church all the time. I used to do what I was supposed to. But some kind of way, life was lifing. And I lost my way. The good news is that God is married to the backslider. And he said he welcomes you back with open arms. So if you want to accept Jesus into your life or if you want to rededicate your life, I want, I want you to lift your hands unto the Lord right now. Then last but not least, if you want to become a member of a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, a place where you can call your home, your house of worship, you can raise your hand. If you want to accept any one of those invitations, we ask that you would raise your hand at this time. Matter of fact, begin to make your way to the front. As you begin to walk toward the front, God will strengthen you. Come on, is that one? Come on, is that one? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the God for the message as well as the messenger. You are not alone. That was good, Kyra. Right on time. God sent the revelant word for a revelant time. For in the moments when it seems as though we're all by ourselves, one thing that we can count on is that the Lord will be there. How many of you know that you serve a God? There will always be there. Hallelujah. As, as we prepare for a moment, this is a sacred moment in which we all can be a part of. For in the Bible, we see that intentional honor is on display. If you look at Philippians, the fourth chapter and the 17th verse. Put it up, y'all. Fourth chapter and the 17th verse. This is the Bible, y'all. It says, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Read it again. This is Paul talking to the Philippian church. For 
What he's trying to get the people of Philippi to understand is that I'm not asking of a gift because I need it. I'm not asking of a gift because I want it. But I'm asking of a gift so that you can be blessed. So it says, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. So as we honor our apostle intentionally, let me tell y'all the way this works. Come here, come here uh, Minister Watkins. Come here, Misty. Let me show y'all the way that this works. I'm giving. Because sometimes our perception, you stand here. All right. This is the giver. Misty is the giver. You the giver, Misty. Hold that money down in your hand. You the giver, Mister. I'm apostle. I'm acting, y'all. I'm apostle. I'm acting apostle. This is acting God. All right? He not really God, y'all. He acting God. Let's just get this straight. So when we think about intentional honor, this is the way that I want to think. I want you to think about it. As the giver gives, does what's obedient to what God says, then the apostle blesses God. What happens is, what's been blessed, it comes right back to you. And then what happens is, it's a cycle. It, keep, it continues. It, and then what happens is, God, the giver gives more, the apostle blesses God, and then what happens is, it gets right back to him. So I got one question. How many of you love the Lord? How many of you want to be obedient to his word? Matter of fact, stand up. If you love God, you want to be obedient to his word, I ask that you would stand. Then last but not least, how many of y'all love your apostle? Come on, let's be real, y'all. So what, what I'm asking is, I'm asking that everybody get something in your hand. The committee is asking for $121. If you can't reach that, don't let that stop your giving. For you have to give according to what God puts on your heart. So they're asking for $121 to be given by April 28th. That's $40 a Sunday. What I want to happen is I need everybody right now to get something in your hand. If you said you want to be obedient to the word of God, you said you love the Lord. And most of y'all clapped when, he, when I asked y'all if y'all love the apostle. I'm going to try it again. Do y'all love y'all apostle and first lady? It would speak volume to them. If we could practice the principle of God and get something in your hand and we could take this moment to give to them. So come on, come on, y'all. Come on, leaders. Come on, y'all. Let's get something in your hand. Everybody get something in your hand, y'all. Y'all, I got my 40 for this week. I got my 40. Come on, everybody. Get something in your hand and begin to make your way up here to the front to practice the principle of the word of God. Come on, leaders. Give us some of that old hip in your pocket music. and glory and honor they all belong to you. All right, y'all, all right, y'all, all right, y'all. If you don't have a cash, I know this is a cash, cashless uh, time. You can cash up Apostle TG. You can sell past that MCI Worship Center, and you can make checks payable to Terry Gullish Ministries. But y'all, come on, let, let's be obedient to the Word of God. Come on, y'all, we serve a pastor that has been serving for 21 years consistently. He prays day in and day out. I know you got to go to the uh, French Quarter Festival, but don't miss the benediction. Come on, y'all. Hey, Amen. Let's all stand as we prepare to go home. Every head bowed and every eye closed, O oh, gracious and everlasting Father. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, but most of all, what our hearts have felt. We thank you, God, for reminding us and letting us know that in the times that we feel as though we are all by ourselves, that we are not alone, that you're always there with us. O oh, gracious God, we ask that as we leave from this place, but never from your presence, that you would lead God and direct our hearts and our steering wheels. God, this week going to be a good week, God. Ain't nobody going to get on our nerves. Ain't nobody going to get on our nerves. God, our children going to behave themselves in school. 
God, we're not going to hear about senseless murders, God. Uh, you're going to protect our vehicles, God. God, our husbands and wives are going to act right. God, our homes are going to run smoothly in the name of Jesus. God, we're going to receive a, a supernatural blessing from on high on this week. And God, we'll be so careful to give you all of the praise and all of the glory. It is in the name of Jesus we thank you, we praise you. Amen and thank you, Lord. You may be dismissed. Y'all come to the front. Shake cower in hand, y'all. Tell him how much he blessed your soul. And you can still give, y'all. You can, just because it's over, church over don't mean you can. Come on, give. Give, give, give. There are several ways you can connect with us. Our church is located at 1600 Westwood Drive, Marrero, Louisiana, 772. Our contact number is 504-340-7777. For emergencies, you can call 504-919-8051. Email us at admin at mciworshipcenter.org. You can also follow us on social media. Our website is www.mciworshipcenter.org. We're on both Facebook and YouTube at Mount Calvary International. Thank you for worshiping with us. Have a great week. Stay encouraged and be blessed.